Y'all, the feds just tied Diddy to Nipsey Hussle's case, and y'all, Diddy is going to jail. The sheer amount of crimes that he has been allegedly linked to is insane. And with the rumors of the feds allegedly reopening the investigation into Nipsey Hussle's well, things just might get 10 times worse for Diddy. Word on the street is that Nipsey Hussle was starting to pose a serious threat to Diddy and Jay-Z because of how much power and influence he was gaining. Allegedly, they tried to set him up multiple times from supposedly getting his girlfriend Lauren in on their schemes to attempting to gather incriminating footage of Nipsey at wild parties. But when none of that worked, the rumor is that Diddy and Jay-Z decided to take the old school route and hired someone to handle the situation for them. Now, it seems like the truth is finally surfacing with the alleged hitman spilling all the tea about what really went down between him, Jay-Z, and Diddy. Let's break it all down. Nipsey Hussle's death sent shockwaves through the internet, not only because it was so sudden and tragic, but also because of who Nipsey was. As a Grammy-winning artist, Nipsey wasn't just known for his incredible music. He was a community leader and an activist who created opportunities for young people and constantly gave back. Practically everyone respected and admired him, and he hadn't even reached the pinnacle of his life and career yet. So why would someone take him out like that in such a senseless way. According to official reports, here's how things went down on that devastating day. On March 31st, 2019, Nipsey had a confrontation with a man named Eric Holder after he allegedly called him out for being a snitch. This altercation tragically escalated into Nipsey losing his life. Around 9 p.m. on that tragic day, Eric Holder showed up at the parking lot of Nipsey's store, Marathon Clothing, where Nipsey was just hanging out. Without warning, Eric opened hitting Nipsey several times and injuring two other people nearby. Less than an hour later, Nipsey was tragically pronounced dead at the hospital. Just a few days later, Eric was arrested and hit with several charges, including first-degree murder, attempted murder, assault with a firearm, and possession of a firearm by a felon. He was eventually convicted on all counts and sentenced to 60 years to life in prison. Now here's where things get wild. During the trial, Eric Holder was reportedly in jail while he was on his way to court. According to his lawyers, two inmates came after him with a razor, and the attack was so brutal that Eric lost consciousness. Rapper Nipsey Hussle's alleged was attacked on his way to court. Eric Holder's attorney tells TMZ that he was attacked by two people while in a holding cell. Holder needed three staples after being with what's believed to be a razor. He also may have lost consciousness during the attack. Closing arguments in the murder trial are scheduled for Thursday. Holder's accused of shooting Hustle at least 10 times in the parking lot of Hustle's South LA store in 2019. Now, considering that Eric was on trial for taking out one of the most beloved figures in LA, it's no surprise that some folks would have had it out for him. But the on him in jail felt a little too deliberate, like someone might have hired those inmates to make sure Eric stayed quiet. This is where the rumors started swirling that maybe Eric didn't take Nipsey out just because of some beef. Maybe someone paid him to do it. And now they were trying to clean up loose ends by silencing him before he could spill all the tea. This theory gained even more traction when the prosecution pointed out that Eric didn't just pull up on Nipsey in a heat of the moment rage. They revealed that he actually went back to his car, loaded up a took a couple of bites of his fries, and then calmly walked back to confront Nipsey in the parking lot. And as if that wasn't cold enough, Eric reportedly kicked Nipsey in the head after him like it was a message. Now, I don't know about you, but that doesn't scream crime of passion to me. That sounds premeditated, almost like a hit. People started putting two and two together, trying to figure out who could have wanted Nipsey out of the picture. And it didn't take long for names like Diddy and Jay-Z to start popping up in the mix. So word on the street is that Nipsey was getting too powerful and influential for Jay-Z and Diddy's liking, and they weren't feeling it one bit. According to the whispers, his rise made them nervous, and they wanted to take him out of the picture. Jaguar Wright didn't hold back when she dropped this bombshell comparing Nipsey's tragic death to that of Lisa Left Eye Lopez, who passed away in a suspicious car accident back in 2002. She made it clear that these situations might not be as random as they seem, hinting at something much darker going on behind the scenes. All those skin diddy parties, all of the support that Snoop has for Honeycomb, you've been moving it the way Snoop allegedly. Well, you f you f nip, y'all moved him out of the way because he was about to give Dr. Sabi to the world all over again, just like Lisa left out Lopez tried to do damn near 30 years ago. Y'all niggas ain't slick. 
So what do Nipsey Hussle and Lisa Left Eye Lopez have in common? For starters, both were incredibly passionate about making a difference in their communities, and both had ties to the controversial Honduran healer Alfredo Bowman, better known as Dr. Sebi. Nipsey was actually working on a documentary about Dr. Sebi before he passed, and Lisa had traveled to Honduras to film her own documentary while undergoing natural treatments from Dr. Sebi at his retreat. Here's where things get shady. Rumor has it that Jay-Z played a role in Left Eye's demise because she was allegedly about to blow the lid off of the conspiracy around Dr. Sebi and Big Pharma and some dark secrets about the industry in her documentary. People say she knew too much and was ready to expose it all. But it doesn't stop there. Right before Nipsey's untimely death, he started to get close to Jay-Z, and there were even rumors of Nipsey signing with Rock Nation. But of course, that deal never happened. Word is, Jay-Z got cold feet, fearing what might happen if Nipsey went fully mainstream given his influence. Then Nipsey started spending time with Diddy, asking him to be his mentor. And here's where it gets even messier. Allegedly, Diddy felt threatened by how much Nipsey was starting to resemble Tupac in terms of influence. And we all know how Diddy felt about Pac. According to Jaguar Wright, Diddy even allegedly orchestrated the relationship between Nipsey and Lauren London so that he could keep tabs on him. She claimed that the whole thing was part of a bigger plot to take Nipsey out once and for all. All of your f secret meetings with Diddy and y'all fucking knew that they put Lauren on him. See, I know Lauren London. Lauren London used to sing backgrounds for me back in the day. You didn't know that, did you? Ah, hell no, I didn't know that. Lauren London used to be one of my background singers. She fell in love with my keyboard player. His name is Omar Edwards. Omar went on to play for Jay-Z after me, after leaving my band. Omar Edwards got Lauren London on to American Idol, which put her in position to meet Nipsey. And then she dumped Omar, who loved her madly, for Nipsey out of nowhere. All those skin diddy parties. Nipsey himself revealed that he first met Diddy through Lauren at Cassie's birthday bash. No, I'm saying mm -hmm. Lauren, Lauren introduced me to Puff. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I mean, I knew Puff, but it was it was more of a personal relationship as to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we was at Double Cassie's birthday, <laughs> something like that, you well, know. What made you want to get an old <laughs> Diddy and put him on your <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> nah, Diddy, Diddy chose young <laughs> try to get him more rap niggas. Mm -hmm. Because oh, okay. I was I was referencing the hate me now. For those who might not be in the loop, Lauren London and Cassie were super tight. They were best friends and even did campaigns together for some of Diddy's brands. Because of how close they were, many people started speculating that Lauren had to know something about Diddy's infamous free calls and might have even taken part in them. The rumor mill has it that Diddy allegedly got Lauren on his payroll back during those freak off days and strategically placed her in Nipsey's life to control him from the inside. Supposedly, the plan was for Lauren to keep tabs on Nipsey and influence his decision all while staying under the radar. What really does make sense is that Diddy has had a long career of using to trap into making them do what he wants to do or using them to move them out the way. How is Faith Evans any different than Lauren London? How? No difference at all. But fans started questioning the whole situation, speculating that maybe Lauren London was being manipulated by Diddy to keep tabs on Nipsey. The idea that she was on Diddy's payroll did not add up for many people. It didn't make sense why someone like Lauren, who had her own successful career, would need to be tied up in Diddy's schemes. But here's where things really start to get wild. In an interview with Angie Martinez, Lauren London opened up about attending a seminar to learn about death and how to prepare for it mentally. Now on the surface, this could be just a coincidence. Maybe she was dealing with personal issues and wanted to be ready for the inevitable. But here's the kicker. During the same interview, when Angie mentions how it almost seems like Lauren is preparing for something, Lauren suddenly gets nervous and shifts her tone. It's like the vibe completely changes. Fans couldn't help but notice how uncomfortable she got. And it only fueled more speculation that something bigger was going on behind the scenes. In my previous years, I, I went to a seminar about death. Okay, you have to tell me. Will you oh just my tell me this now? I know, like, yeah. No, please, please share, please share. Why? I have a friend. Why were you there? And what did you learn? I learned that no one really dies and that, you know, it's just an experience in the physical form mm -hmm. and we're attached to our personalities, but that we're just souls and that we continue and continue and continue. And if you have a spiritual relationship with someone on earth, you will have one with them when you leave earth. Um, so I did this like two day seminar on death, so. And this was how long ago? I had to be like 25. What sent you there? Um, <laughs> Do you find that weird though? I'm weird. No, it's not weird that you would go. It's just, it's almost like you were preparing yourself for what you would have to do. Well, deal I told with. you I didn't have such a connection to earth at a young age. I know, but you don't find that as like you were preparing yourself for what you were gonna have to deal with. Well, that we're all gonna have to deal with. That's true. 
point. All right, very good. That's a <laughs> solid point, Lauren. You know what I mean? Solid it's point. not just me. Like, we You're all right. have to go through it. Yeah, it definitely seemed like Lauren was hiding something. And whatever Diddy did to get close to Nipsey worked. Allegedly, Diddy managed to lure Nipsey into attending his infamous freak-off parties. Nipsey, thinking he was just going to be rubbing shoulders with celebrities at what seemed like a regular party, had no idea what he was walking into. Then WAC 100 came forward with some messy tea, claiming that Diddy had secretly recorded compromising footage of Nipsey at one of the freak-off parties. And the plot thickens. Wax said that he was in possession of the footage, but was holding off on releasing it to the public for now. Right? And it didn't come out of my mouth. Hassan Campbell recorded the conversation uh -huh. and released it. Oh, th it's oh that's, only, that's where it came out. It's okay. only because of me that the damn tape still ain't came out to date. But anybody want to challenge me to these tapes, you notice that the first baby mama who starred in these tapes has never one time said, WAC 100 is lying. I didn't want it to come out. Hassan Campbell released it. Right. They asked me about it. Well, I come from a power rule, what you say once, you say twice. So when they ask me about it, what you want me to say? No, I didn't say it. If Diddy really had something so incriminating hanging over Nipsey's head, it would definitely explain why Nipsey didn't push back when Diddy basically swooped in and tried to claim his entire Victory Lap album as if it were a bad boy project. It definitely seems like Diddy strategically inserted himself into Nipsey's life to keep tabs on him and stay in the loop about his movements. Cowboy pointed out that it was bizarre for someone to just randomly take Nipsey out in front of his own store, a place where he was almost every day. Hatred, hatred, jealousy, envy, that, that's that's all it was. Like uh had they had a real had they had a real beef or something, had they been beefing, I could say nothing. Had they had a real beef, that was just a, a that was just an all out blatant crime. That was all hate and jealousy. You know what I mean? Had they been beefing and and they was going at it, you know what I mean? That would be a different ball game. You know, nobody could say nothing about nothing. You know, uh this dude did a foul crime. Uh, when he started wearing off and turned himself in. You know, he didn't come back and do no street justice. You know what I mean? He didn't get no, nobody no action at him. You know, he did a, he did a Bush crime and he the heart of the city. Fans are shocked by this and they left comments saying, Diddy, Jay-Z, both Nipsey in the same way they Left Eye, Tupac, B.I.G., and Aaliyah, and Kim Porter. Who knows? There's probably more that we don't know. Diddy and Jay-Z are the cartel or mafia in the music industry. That's why they were the two at the top of everybody. Two billionaires and two mafia bosses. And if a rapper dies at the peak, that last album becomes an instant classic. Diddy made millions from Biggie after he passed. Would make sense that he wanted to own the rights to the last album of another popular rapper. This is a lot to unpack, but y'all, let me know how you feel about this, and then check out this this next video.